Well, I think yeah, it, I think it would be really funny if we all just left now and just left Tom in the room on his own. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so, um, I guess get me up to speed on what we've been doing here so far. Well, we're up to your questions. Oh, are we? Uh, cool. <clears throat> Maybe I'll. You know, I have a few notes here. I focused mostly uh, on armored skeptics' response, actually, just because um, I tend to think he's one of the people out of the Rationals TM who's actually probably most willing to change his views on these sort of things. Uh, and so, you know, I thought I thought a lot of what he said wasn't really that objectionable, per se. Um, so, I mean, I had a few things here. Let's see. Um, well, first of all, he opened, and I mean, if you've said any of this, just feel free to let me know. But um, he said when he first opened the video, like, you know, um, this video by Christy Winters where referring to, you know, you addressing the questions white men have for SJW's video directly. He said, she and some other people, she and some other people who I guess identify as social justice warriors. And that was interesting to me because it's like, is like, since when is SJW a self-applied identity? Because I, do you know anybody who would actually refer to themselves as, as a social justice warrior? Because I, no. I haven't found them. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. We have a consensus on that. Um, and let's see, I'll, I'll go to this point. Um, he said a few things in the span of a few seconds at one point when he said, uh, I think he was responding to one of Tim's questions. He said like, I personally am anti-social justice and anti-feminism because I've noticed that those groups have become quite idealistic, which I thought jarred with the fact that he's always like, oh, I'm not an anti-feminist. I'm just a skeptic of all, any and all claims. And I was like, well, you know, pick one. And then later he was like, I don't identify as an anti SJW or an anti feminist because I feel those are meaningless terms. And it's like, well, what did you just say? And then later he says that he's not against social justice as a whole or feminism as a whole. And it's like, whoa, you are, these were all like sentences that came like one after another in the same answer to these questions. And I got, <laughs> it was, it was utterly confusing. Um, <clears throat> and let's see when Tim asked, like, why do you have an aversion to being labeled right wing? He said that the reason we have an aversion to being called right wing is because we're not. And I was like, well, I mean, I think in reference to the group that skeptic is in, I think that's fairly accurate. A lot of them are pretty like, you know, they're, I guess you could call them liberal. I mean, we're, we're, you guys are probably a different kind of liberal from them, I would assume, but, uh, it's I, I feel like he was kind of discounting the fact that there's a lot of right wing anti SJWs. And I mean he did talk about that, but like, you know, Stefan Molyneux, that guy T and you speak to these people, does he not want to acknowledge them? Or does he just want he doesn't want to acknowledge that they're in the same camp to some extent or not? Any thoughts on that, anybody? Um I uh... I, it's I tough, I know. They're always, they often said in the answers that you're trying to apply right wing to us. You're trying to make us right wing. And I guess, like, if somebody comes to me and says, you're a cultural Marxist, that doesn't make sense to me unless you're right wing. Like, that's Nazi terminology. Why would a, <laughs> a left wing person use that? Like, it mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. I just don't even get that. Like, so... So if you say, oh, you cultural Marxist, by the way, I'm a left winger. I just yeah. sit there and go, I don't understand you. Yeah, that's <laughs> you just <laughs> just like the whole. <sighs> yeah, not yeah. just that, but people who claim to be left wing and have backed Donald Trump. Ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Now, let's see. And then when he answered my first question, which was the uh, the thing about bleach, uh, he said something that I thought was pretty admirable. He just said, I wouldn't have put Anthony Fantano's bleach question in my own video, but that wasn't really my choice. And I was just like, well, okay. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Um, to be fair, I think this is one of the good things about Skeptic is that he's not telling people to like, he didn't do the Kraut and Teeth thing where he just insulted the person to their face and just walked away like he did to Steve Shives, um, which I thought was like, you know, good on you, Greg. <laughs> um, let's see. And, and then there was... Why, oh, can I just say also that's why yeah. as the editor and producer, I circulated versions and got people's feedback because I wanted everybody to know what was in the video before it went out. 
And if an agent yeah. had an objection or wanted to give, give input, then that opportunity was given before your name was attached mm. to it. Yeah, I think that's that's that was important because I, I know privately having talked to one of the people involved in the original white men quest, uh, questions white men have for SJW, they really were not happy to be associated with AIU, but they didn't, uh, yeah. they didn't know that he was involved in the thing at all. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's a completely understandable reaction to being featured alongside that guy. So I, I completely understand that. Um, he said, skeptic said one thing that I kind of want to, I don't know, fact check, I guess, since I mean, you would probably be the relevant people to ask this to. He said at some point that the term third wave feminist was coined by Naomi Wolf, but I was pretty sure it was Rebecca Walker. Did, can anybody like clarify? Does that term have an origin? I've heard Walker too. I yeah. I usually just put it on you know the Google machine right now if you want. Yeah, because I, I saw, because um, Rebecca Walker wrote that article in Ms. Magazine called Becoming the Third Wave, and I'm pretty sure that's where it started. Um. Not that like, not that that's really too much of like a dig against Greg, like, oh, he can't even do his own research. But like, I mean, that was just something that was interesting. I wasn't sure about that myself. Um, let's see. And then, oh, my next question about uh, like, why do you seem less concerned with, concerned with like actual feminist theory and stuff as you are with wrecking people for views? He said uh, he doesn't do academic papers because he's dyslexic. And he leaves that to Thunderfoot and Sargon, who do a much better job of that than he could, because as we all know, Sargon's so good at reading studies. Oh God, he's so <laughs> he's so good. He's he's the best. <laughs> mm. And then he said, "Let's see." He said, "My job is to deal with the practical application of feminism as we see it online and in society." And I was like, "Well, does that mean that you're taking a look at like feminist ac ac bleh, feminist activism generally, or are you just looking at like crazy people?" You know, because I think a lot of what they do is just like looking at, oh, look at this person, look at this person, look what they do. But like, you know, you could always talk about like, I feel like they only ever bring the actual feminist activism up when they're talking about the people who they think are bad. Um, like, you know, all the people who are raising money to end female genital mutilation in the Middle East and all that. They only really ever bring them up when they're trying to um, lessen the importance of Black Lives Matter activism and, you know, uh, similar first world activism, um, which I guess could all tie back to that same relative privation fallacy that they love to pull out a lot. Oh, also, by the way, I do have an answer on the question. After trying a couple different sources, I, I came back to Wiki because it was the best source. And it says here that um, Rebecca Walker published an article entitled Becoming the Third Wave, um, in which she stated, I am not a post-feminism feminist, I am the third wave. Mm -hmm. and that seems to be where the term originated and the citation is from 1992. Yeah, I think that sounds about right to me. That's about what I could gather as well. So now we know we're all a little bit smarter, thanks to Google. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. And his other point about academics was... Uh, he said, academics don't make a lot of YouTube videos, so it's hard to make YouTube videos, YouTube debunking videos to the things they say. And I mean, I don't really think that's stopped a lot of people before, you know, Sargon again, uh, I hate to repeat myself, but then he, I think he said something like, the quote I wrote down is, it's easy to see how Anita Sarkeesian is, is directly affecting society. And I think he was saying that like compared to feminist academics, it's like, you know, the feminist theory isn't as hard to analyze, isn't as easy to see like how it's affecting the world. But somebody like Anita Sarkeesian is very obviously having an effect on the world apparently by talking about video games. I don't know. Get back to me on that one. But... My, face is, my face is twitching right now. <laughs> me too. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's fine. Um, and let's see. Uh, did you guys talk about um, any of the answers to Steve Shives' question about second wave feminists? Like which second wave feminists do you specifically admire? Well, last night the guys had really only had time to look at some of the responses to their own questions. They didn't yeah. go through others. Um, Chrissy Elsidi has done a few, uh, but I think it was more general. So we haven't yeah. talked about Armored Skeptic and, and yeah. in particular, I don't think yet. I'm, you know, I, I just thought I would do. I mean, I did not like. No, that's fine. I yeah. like I, close reading. Yeah. We call this a close reading. 
Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I don't know how close it is. I mean, I did look for his answers to my questions, but I, you know, I skipped around and looked at other people's who I thought, you know, I could have something to say about. But um, when he said, when Steve asked which second wave feminist do you specifically admire, he like he put in like angelic vocals and, and faded in a picture of Christina Hoff Sommers from the bottom of the video. And I was like, well, I knew somebody was going to say that. <laughs> um, I was expecting more answers. Like, I don't know. I think Steve said that he was expecting a certain answer to come up a lot, but I was expecting Christina Hoff Sommers to come up a lot. And that was interesting to me because I don't think she identifies as a second waiver. Um, you know, she usually says that like her whole thing is equity feminism, which is, yeah, yeah. she's an equity. Yeah. Feminist. Um, he, she was like, I was reading in a few places and she says that like, I don't know, her brand of feminism kind of harkens back to like, uh, equal rights and equal opportunities for women, like in the style of the first wave, as opposed to the second. Um, yeah, that's, that's how backward she is. The second wave is, is far too progressive for her. Exactly. Um, and I have a quote from her here. Cause like, you know, she's made public the fact that she disagrees with some second waivers on some things like. This is a quote from her. You probably heard it. The perspective now from my point of view is that the better things get for women, the angrier the women's studies professors seem to be, the more depressed Gloria Steinem seems to get. And she's like, as far as I know, Gloria Steinem like is the second wave. Like she's a big part of the second wave. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> interesting. If I could trump this, uh, I have heard it said, it's a lot of people are saying that when uh, Christina Hoff Summers does a public talk, she won't do a Q&A afterwards. And if, if that is the case, and that's what I'm hearing, you know, a lot of people are saying this, um, then it would be interesting to see what the people who advocate free speech and all that and blocking would have to say about that policy. Yeah. Um, so that was... Oh my God, she's the Steve Shives of whatever she is. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Shives of whatever. Uh, I was going to say, I, I expected a bit few more people to maybe mention Camille Pallia as another. I did see oh, yeah. some. Yeah, oh, yeah, I saw her once or twice pop up, but I thought she would be mainly because she's essentially an anti feminist, yeah. like mm -hmm. Christine Half Summers, basically. Mm -hmm. the, one, the one who I think Steve mentioned that he thought was going to come up a lot was uh, that woman who opened up a, uh, uh, a Aaron domestic Pizzi. abuse show. Erin Pitts. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The domestic abuse shelter for men and then apparently feminists shut it down. I don't know much about that situation myself. Um, she's, a really, she's a really fascinating example of the only MRI I've ever seen do any activism whatsoever in the real world, but he's also still a massive dickhead. <laughs> yeah. I just point out that feminism as a movement has been going since the 19th century and in all that time, you know, really we talk about the 60s, let's say, okay, let's talk about second wave since the 1960s and in the last 50 years, these people can come up with maybe four people. That yeah. No. <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't speak well to their knowledge, does it? Also, I think the bigger point with uh, Steve's question about uh, which you know uh, second wave do you uh, do you admire is that actually this is the this is a point I, I've I've sort of touched on in previous hangouts is that these people don't actually give a fuck. It's basically in the same way that racists today will invoke the memory of Martin Luther King because he's yesterday's hero. He's not a threat to their narrative today. So they can, they can happily accept him as a shield and say, okay, well, I support the uh, feminism of bygone eras or I can accept the race politics of bygone eras because they're not a direct threat to your status quo today because obviously they can't yeah. be. Most of those people are dead and are not, you know, uh, part of the political establishment or anything like that. And that's why they do that. And I think Steve quite cleverly got under the people's skin with that. And yeah. I would say, at least about Christina Hoff Summers, you know, instead of, again, focusing on the solutions to the problem, she seems to profit from perpetuating the division. Mm -hmm. And instead of talking about, um, you know, men and boys' issues in a way that tries to take things forward, she does it in a way that tries to make men look out like the victims and women look like the perpetrators. Which is ironic, given that she's best friends with Marla Yiannopoulos, a man who defends um, Catholic priest, predator, pedophiles. Yeah, and generally just um, a very nasty human being to other human beings. Yeah. The whole situation's just gone to shit. Yeah. The right, the right is eating itself, guys. 
Let's see. Um, well, I've gotten to, speaking of sort of the right, I got into an argument with someone on your comment section. Um, oh, yeah? Uh, not yours, uh, Christie's actually, I'm sorry. Ah. Um, yeah. I gave up on your comment section. Oh my god! Yeah, mine. Uh, my, my, it's, it's probably because I'm like more left than the rest of you guys, so I get people who are further right than what you guys are even used to. Mm. It's a weird so, horseshoe. You know, I, I had gotten sort of. Um, uh, so somebody was saying, "Well, I like Christina Hoff Summers, but I don't like people who don't criticize um, the Middle East enough or or aren't." involved in the Middle East. And I said, well, Christina Hoff Summers gets a lot of her money from oil billionaires who have contracts in Saudi Arabia and other th these other places. So, you know, you would think that she would be even more somebody you don't like because, you know, sure, some campus feminist might not be talking about, you know, Muslims in the way that you would like them to, but at least they're not paying for her swimming pool. Like, and the just the absolute denial like well what are you talking about like well no she this is she this is where her paycheck comes from like i don't know mm -hmm. maybe well, that's that there's have, there have always been women who have done well from being anti-feminist mm -hmm. and we see it today i think the honey badgers in so situation is obviously another example of that and yeah, I think you know, there's always been a market for a woman who's willing to speak out and basically, I mean, and she has been called anti-feminist by other women who do self-identify as feminists and not equity feminists, you know, in that sort of, uh, I'm my own kind of feminist kind of way. Yeah, I mean, she can call herself a feminist if she wants to. I don't really care, but it's just, um, I don't understand somebody who says I don't like feminism because it isn't dealing with the Middle East but I do like this one feminist who gets her, her money from, you know, from all these sort of tied in with the Middle East. Like, what is she doing that you like? Is she helping the people in the Middle East in some way? Because mm -hmm. I'm not seeing it. She's just telling yeah. other people that they're not doing that. So I'm only aware of her going after Western feminism. Yeah, yeah her, her feminism seems to be just attacking other people's feminism. It doesn't seem very productive. Anyway. So maybe they should ask her, I would like them to ask her what she's doing with the Middle East. <laughs> if she's going to be a feminist, she needs to, she needs to answer for Valerie Solanas. She needs to uh -huh. answer uh, what she's doing in the Middle East and to help people in the Middle East and why the hell she's not doing more. That's what I need her to answer for me. Yeah. Then she gets to be a feminist. Yeah, then, Gosh, then we're, all we're, of the privileged guests, the white guys who get to decide what a feminist is, then you've ticked all their boxes and you get to be a real feminist. <laughs> oh, we're so reasonable. <laughs> the reasonables TM. So, <clears throat> yeah, do you want to go on with the next uh, point that you wanted to... Uh, yeah, the last, the last point that I had about Skeptic's video was like my question that kind of ended the thing where I just put Sargon's question back in their faces. Um, he, the way he answered it was just to play the, uh, the oh my god clip from Troll 2. <laughs> so um, at least, I mean, he could at least understand that like, you know, it was a joke and he didn't try and give it like an actual answer, which I was like, okay, that's probably better than an answer at all. Like his non-response was probably better than in TJ's video when he said like, well, it made more sense when we asked it to you and that was just his whole answer and he didn't like assert why other than just like, yeah, you you guys are the emotionally mature ones. Yeah, I think that. that yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say. I think you hit upon a really interesting um, part of of, of 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 the way I viewed these responses is to try and see the relative intelligences of the people involved by whether they got whether the individual questions being asked were sort of jokey or wanted as required a serious answer, and if they gave a serious answer to a joke. I, my estimation of their intelligence went down very significantly. Yeah. <laughs> like um, when TJ answered, what is it with you people in skulls? He was just like, skulls are cool. And that was it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like that, like that required a fucking answer, you idiot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least, you know, that's kind of funny rap. Yeah. I mean, now we know TJ thinks skulls are cool. Maybe they'll start showing up in his videos too. 
It's just going to be skulls everywhere for the rest of time. So, Tom, do you want to talk about your mirroring? And because you were the one that was linked to a couple different um, main video, main response videos, and what that was like in terms of the reactions of the different comments. Um, surely, I will pull up really quickly. Just my, I'm going to get to my mirror of the video on YouTube, but I'm just going to talk while I do it. Um, it was interesting that like, I'm not really sure why everybody thought like my video. A lot of people like you said, links to my video as the mirror of, I don't know, whatever you said. That was just word salad. But um, <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> Armored Skeptic <laughs> screenshotted my mirror and asked me on Twitter, like, oh, apparently asking questions is poning now and added me and no one else. Um, some people have tweeted me their responses just in a tweet to me, just adding me. Um, it's at 5,016 views now. What? Um, let's see. But I will say the like dislike ratio is like almost directly in the middle. 336 likes to 395 dislikes. And I think everybody, I think really the reason everybody, maybe not the reason everybody, but the reason a few people linked to it is probably because I think I had the idea for the video in the first place. So maybe they were just, maybe that was just their logical thing was to be like, Oh, well he must be, but like, you know, that, that kind of leaves out the work that not only Christy did, but the work that everybody else put into that video to make it what it is. Um, and you know, well, that's why I was glad no one linked to mine because that would have been absurd. Well, yeah, <clears throat> let's see. People just keep linking me their responses in the comments and they keep getting marked as spam because there's a link in them. And I don't know how many of them I want to like, check off or not for mine i put them all up because it was the one of the original videos but yeah i kind of have to check because uh -huh. sometimes people just put random crap as a response in there as well so you have to go through them i'm just going on mine because uh, if you wanted to know i actually have to go on the video to see the likes to dislikes ratio but yeah i've got like um 2700 dislikes and um like getting on 700 likes and twenty eight thousand. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we got a lot of eyeballs, I guess. Yeah. I got a lot of horrible comments. Um, some okay comments, but I've, I've kind of been filtering that, the comments more than kind of really, well, I've gone through and I've actually collected all of the people who took the time to go through all the questions, but I haven't been like going well, them and responding one by one. Well, what, what I wanted to ask, well, I suppose it applies to both Tom and Christy, given that you've been linked to a number of these responses and by relatively big, you know, people. Who would you suggest has the worst fan base, given the different waves of hate that have been pouring your way? Uh, just from this or from, yeah. like... Yeah, like I say, like you've been given... I know it's the Honey Badgers linked your one, and you know everyone had a you know, uh, linked back to one of the originals. Yeah. And so presumably you've had those waves of fans coming over. Who would you suggest is probably the worst? Or... The Honey Badgers um, had some very uh, interesting people. Interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, TJ, I don't know if he linked to me or or not, um, but I got a bunch of his fans, and I got a bunch of, um, oh, who is it? Dr. Randomer Cam, I guess. Oh, him. Yeah. Um, so, you know, all that I got from them, though, really was, oh, you've been pwned, you've been wrecked, you've been destroyed, and it's like, okay, I'm sure uh -huh. that that is, that is what happened. So, um, well, I, I wouldn't take that too harshly considering their version of activism involves getting their fans to buy them a house. Yeah. That's so, true. Mm. yeah. Mm. Did any of you guys get like comments that actually went through and answered every single question in like the longest screed you've ever written? Uh, yeah. Dozens. I yeah. get those all the time. Yeah. And by <laughs> the way, just, just to everyone watching, I don't read those. If you can't either make. <laughs> Make a fucking response video or keep it down to reasonable length. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to make a response video, then like, you know, be concise with it. I don't mean to sound like Sargon, like, can you not summarize this in under five? Like, if you have to make a long response, I understand. But I mean, yeah, but get the try, try and keep it to under six Sargons if you can. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Um, 
Like Armored Skeptics ran on for about 56 minutes, which was okay. I did appreciate that TJ broke it up into three videos. Um, although that was kind of a sign of doom that like the first part was 20 minutes and it said part one of three. And I just went, oh God, we're going to have to listen to like more of this. Because <laughs> you know, to me, his response wasn't the brightest at times. Um, Thick, which is uh, why I didn't really, I didn't really focus on it too much. Cause like, I think uh, Martin Hughes wrote a really great blog post about that. So he said a lot of the things that, you know, I would have said, but just better. Um, I decided to, you know, focus more on the responses that I thought were a bit more redeemable, which is why I mostly focused on, you know, armored skeptics, but I did have one guy in particular that I wanted to talk about. He's not really like, a big name YouTuber. He just kind of makes videos. Um, guys, YouTube channel is QNTKKA. Did any of you get tweets oh, from him or anything? Yeah, Quintika. I know him. He's, he's Quintika. An anti yeah, he's ah. an anti-feminist dude, but he's actually not the worst at all. I mean, yeah, he said in his response, I didn't watch too much of it for reasons I'll explain in a second, but he said at some point, I think that he's like a left liberal, which, you know, okay. But yeah, I've, done, I've done a few hangouts with him. He's Certainly, it, uh, centrists at the very worst, really. Yeah, but I mean, he, he uh, tweeted me his response uh, to our questions with, uh, let's see. It's, uh, he gave me the link and said, at Tom Avella, here are your answers, runt. He called me a runt, and I tweeted back at him, like, evaluate yourself here for a second. Do you really think that calling me a runt is going to entice me to hear what you have to say on this? And he just tweeted me back the word, yes. Are we sure that wasn't a misspelling? Um, of, oh, <laughs> no, because he said it to me about three more times. Um, so I think it was very deliberate. Uh, classic Quintica. Um, no, okay, thank you. For, okay, I know okay. I pronounced his name. I've, I'm re I've revised my opinion. He's a bit of a twat. Well, yeah. And then um, I only watched maybe about three minutes. I mean, partly because... You know, I'm a full-time college student. I don't really have much time to watch all these responses and partly because of some things he said in it. So I had just like two points of his, like he says at some point back on the demotivators question about right wing, he said, I would define right wing as being a set of political beliefs that exist in opposition to the left wing, which is viewed as normal. And I had a few problems with that. So I think first of all, like, if, if you've adopted a series of beliefs specifically to get back at people with different beliefs, then what, like, what are you standing on other than just opposition to something? Like, that's my problem with, like, defining right wing as being like, oh, right wing is just a set of beliefs that are against the left wing. So, like, Well, then, but what? the problem with that is you can then do the reverse, and then basically it's entirely meaningless. Mm -hmm. uh, I, like, it's, it's like how I always view the men's rights movement as existing just in opposition to feminism which yeah. i think is a pretty valid uh, yeah. yeah that's just that's just like they would have no talk about men's issues if there weren't feminists talking about women's issues like that's that's how i view it and then he said it exists in opposition to the left wing which is viewed as normal and like well who who are you saying views the left as normal is that like that's that's kind of weasel wordy without actually using weasel words. It's, it seems like kind of a baseless assertion. And skeptic said that too. He's like, you know, the left here who has the most influence right now in academia and in the media and in government. And I don't know how keen I am on that as somebody who is very left. I do not see the left represented in. Yeah. I, was, I would suggest that, that much. all of the corporate media are owned by neoliberals. So I really don't see that the left is dominant in that respect at all oh but neoliberal has the word liberal in it so they have to be left well like well like <laughs> liberal i mean that's yeah me, that's the stupidest thing sargon ever said i'm on the yeah. left I'm plus when people. when i when edgy sphinx did my response to episode four of my buzzword series which is about liberalism i mentioned in that video that classical liberalism was kind of co-opted by right wingers and i kind of faded in a little like faded image of sargon of a cat and took it away and Edgy Sphinx really railed on me for that. I think it's like, oh, you really think he's right wing? And I mean, you know, just because Edgy Sphinx is further to the right than Sargon, I don't think that means that like, because if you look at 
classical liberalism, it is very similar in spirit to right-wing libertarianism nowadays. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but a lot of the same spirit is there. And a lot of those people are more socially progressive, but their politics are very, you know, specifically right-wing or center-right or whatever you want to say. I have a hard time viewing Sargon as anything other than just like an enigma, you know, like his politics are a very strange mix of like, um, you know, right-wing libertarianism and progressivism and a few other things. Um, yeah. It's very difficult to pin him down, but I wouldn't pin him on the left. Well, I like the phrase brochialist. <laughs> yeah. There is a book, I think the author is Zeller, and it's about like forming public opinions. And one of the premises or the theses of the book is that for people who, let's call them low information voters, when you ask them questions, they just kind of, it's not that they generate random answers, but they don't think about how all of their politics hang together. They don't have a core ideology that informs when they come to an issue that they draw on to inform it, they kind of have a gut reaction and then they decide on it and they stick that on a tree of other things that they think, if that kind of makes sense. He didn't say the thing about the tree. I said the thing about the tree, but it just kind of made sense to sort of separate it out. <laughs> so just to say, Zeller yeah. never said anything about hanging ideas in a tree. But that might explain a little bit about why his views tend to be a bit random because they don't come from a coherent sort of well thought out process and ideology. Um, he just kind of goes with, whatever the mood is at the time or what's popular. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that you said the tree. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Christy Winters original. <laughs> Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so Can that I was throw something in here completely unrelated because I just realized I said something that could have could easily have been taken out of context Go when I it. talked about cultural Marxism uh, being from Nazis. So I don't see why a left-wing person would, would use that. I wasn't trying to say that right-wingers are Nazis. Like, that's the same thing, but... Oh, I am. I'm definitely saying that. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. No, no, like, my impression of it was, why would you use a term used by fascists if that was yeah, my impression of your... That was... Mm -hmm. They had a very right-wing ideology, so... Yeah. No, they were the National Socialist German Workers' Party, guys. Come on. Exactly, were, and we all, <laughs> we all know that, you know, uh, tiny moustaches equals left wing. Thanks, Steven Crowder. So, oh, that um, guy can go fuck himself. Oh, oh um, man. Very quickly, just to answer Kevin's, Kevin's earlier question. So I just checked, and there are, in terms of the numbers of comments on the my, my version of the video, it's at, at 2725. I have not read... Mm -hmm. All of the comments and I haven't I've been a little bit too overwhelmed to see the waves so what helps me is to know what a person says in their video because a lot of times their fans will just come and echo rather than watch the video they'll just come and write comments you know like the oh yeah, yeah, time, yeah. Uh, watched plummets when you have these big videos so I'm not um, okay enough with everybody's individual responses to me to have seen the waves but um, unlike the people who've gone before, just to be, well, one, it's more convenient for me, and two, to do something different. For the people who took the time to wrote, write out the responses, I actually went and collected as many as I could, like, on an evening uh, Thursday, and it ended up being 36 pages, I think the word document was in length. But my plan is to go through those, and for those people, ooh, party car going by, those people who uh, wrote out a response to me. I'm going to collect those and thematize them and see if there are some common responses and then that's what I'm going to do in my head. Christy, can I just give you a piece of advice? Next time you get a Thursday night off, just go and get really drunk instead. <laughs> <I should. laughs> Probably. It's a much better use of anyone's time. Well, we had so many people saying, are you guys going to do a response? Are you going to do a response? You know, and also a lot of, I have to say, I'm going to say it come across, a lot of people feeling entitled, like, um, to me sitting down and watching their response video to me, not really understanding that there are at least 40, probably now closer to 50 or 60 response videos and all the comments to go through. So I'm sorry we didn't have a chance to address everybody's video individually, but it's just too, there's just too much and we're making a sincere are you suggesting that anti-feminist white dudes are entitled? Because that, I mean, I've never seen that. I, I oh, know. never. <laughs> no, no sense of entitlement. No, no absolutely. No. Yeah, yeah. I made something, oh. watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Not just that, watch but it, Watch it now, watch it now, runt. I like, exactly, exactly. I love when they do that. Like, I, I fucking wrecked you, you prick. Go and watch oh. it. 
Oh yeah, well, and, I'll definitely watch it now. Thanks. Yeah. And then, um, and then later, uh, Quintika actually tweeted at me at Tom Avella, Hey, Runt, why ask questions if you don't want the answers? Hashtag SJW. Hashtag cowards. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> the kind of entitlement that I'm. Talking yeah. About. yeah, yeah, I got a lot of like. It's one thing if you've asked me nicely to to watch your video and then I didn't and then you're being a mm -hmm. dick about it. But if you're coming out and saying you're too much of a coward to ever watch this video, like. What? Uh -huh. what? I, I, especially, I especially love the ones that will, will wait like fucking 20 minutes and then be like, you still haven't watched my video. Yeah, I, it, it was an hour ago. What the fuck? What do you expect me to do? <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Um, the last thing I wanted to say about Quintika is that um, I got as far as his response to Philip Moriarty's question about like reconciling evidence-based worldviews with like the whole I was just shit posting culture of Twitter. And um, so what happened was Quintika opened his response. So he says, how do you reconcile? Oh, I'm evidence-based and I'm logic-based with, oh, I was just trolling. Oh, I was just shit posting or TLDR. And the first thing Quintika says is people on the autism spectrum, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, I was like, oh, we're, this is gonna, this is gonna be hell irrational. <laughs> <laughs> that was that, exactly that. That's like some beautiful nonsense poetry or something. I that is know. that is some that is that is art in the purest form. But like like wow. And what wound up happening was that what wound up happening was that Philip Moriarty um, was diagnosed by Quintika. He armchair diagnosed Philip with autism because apparently he can't tell the difference between a lie and a truth. A lie being a joke and a truth being truth. I don't know. I don't. What I don't get is with YouTube, right? YouTubers basically should have put out the uh, psychiatry industry out of business because you don't need to get training <laughs> and go through years of doing a degree. You can just rock up and say, "Oh yeah, this fucker's autistic." Yep, so, job done. Yeah. Mm. Um, anything else, Tom? About um, like the comments from your video or? I'm going to... Um, any other interactions? If you don't have any, that's okay. I just wanna, you know, don't want to skip over you before. I'll probably... Let's see. Let's sort them by, like, most recent. Because I do read them as they come sometimes. Uh, like, let's see. Uh, people... Mostly just people telling me I got wrecked by, like, everyone that the video addresses and shit. Like, um... And how do you wrecked a question? Exactly. Like, how do you... <laughs> I kept saying it's not... They're questions. You, it's like a... They shouldn't be destroyed. They should be answered. That's what yeah. I Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> not, not just that, but please spell it properly for fuck's sake. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we're, we're not, we're not 10 year olds. Yeah. And then what was it? Three days ago, Noel Plum actually posted his response. He said, it was your, it was your idea. Eh? Well done for the idea. Well done for the idea. Out of courtesy, I'm informing you that I made a response, and here's the link. If you choose to watch the video, could I take this opportunity to advise you to drink something other than bleach or any similar potentially corrosive substance while listening to my seemingly endless rambling? And I haven't gotten around to it, but at least he was like, yeah, don't drink bleach. Just drink something like bleach. I think that you shows the level, the level of scumbaggery on the quote-unquote opposite side, um, given that, that, given that um, the, it's a point in their favor that they didn't ask you to drink bleach. Yeah, it's just like they just have to, yeah, they just have to be a decent person. You know, Noel and I don't um, often see eye to eye, but I wanted to say that that seemed like he was trying to actually make a decent, you know, gesture in that one and good on him for that. Yeah, let's see. Um, some of the, like, profiles these guys he, make uh, on here. He, he's done two videos now that I've seen that, you know, and I, I think he engaged the most that I've seen anybody engaged with Steve with Steve Stive's questions. So for that alone, just throwing yeah, that out there. He's not the worst. I disagree with him on a great deal of stuff, but he's by no means the worst. Yeah. There there's there's much it surprisingly it goes much further down. Um like somebody called Drink Bleach Every Day left an interesting nugget. Um <laughs> <laughs> he says, let's just take this like piece by piece. There's I, no I, I love how logical these people are. It's glorious. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is rational discourse at its finest. He says, um, there's no solid left or right wing. There's the authoritarian left, in parentheses, you guys. 
the authoritarian right, Fox affiliates and the elderly, and the most popular shitlords on YouTube are made up half of libertarian liberals and libertarian Republican. Libertarian liberals? I love, I love the fact that we're supposed to be not doing, you know, uh, lumping people together. And he's just said, yeah. the elderly. Yeah, all I of the been... elderly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, talk to Noam Chomsky, man. Come on. Um, but like the whole libertarian liberals, that is to me, like, as, you know, as someone who's a left libertarian, that is just like infuriating to me. Libertarian liberals. Libertarian liberal is a philosophical farce. Yeah. As is libertarian Republican, <laughs> as he said. Um, let's see. Libertarians of either wing are brought together by their shared hatred of authoritarians, and authoritarian Republicans hate you because you're their reverse image. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just... Sorry, there are perfectly reasonable responses to that that you could just want to be, oh, fuck off. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Yeah, and let's see. I myself am a Green Party liberal and side against SJWs. Interesting that Green Party, I mean, to me, the Green Party seems like they would be like perfect candidates for being called SJWs, especially with their whole like anti science quackery and all that nonsense. Um, but that's just kind of an interesting thing. Let's see. I used to be one of you in the early 90s. Incidentally, I am a woman and the drink bleach thing is actually a sort of meme response to cringe videos. Well, I mean, yeah, I get that, but it's still not very nice, is it? <laughs> yeah, so in terms of like the responses, the responses to our response, I mean, I think when we did our, okay, when I edited it and took really too long to do our three-part response to their very loaded questions, skewed questions, um, monologuing questions. You know, a lot of people in those responses took time to sincerely engage with the question and unpack it and give an answer. And how many people do you think met that effort from the sounds of it? Like you said, Noel Plum was the closest that you thought he got, that they got to- With Steve, um, I thought Infidel Emma and Positive Improvements and these are some smaller channels, but these were, um, I, I'm thinking of someone, I think his name is Mim Hedrum, Insensitive Bastard. Oh, yeah. And Stacy King. Hmm. I, I thought they all sort of took it pretty seriously and, and sort of really engaged with the ideas and had their own ideas and, and came back and were sort of well um yeah you know they were cogent and logical arguments in there that you could look at and say yeah i, I get where you're t what you're saying and i you know i might disagree with you or might not but i can totally understand the argument i can it's related to the question <laughs> which is good um you know so that sort of thing so we did a little shout out to responses to our questions in our own responses video for hangout yeah. So people yeah. should go watch those for better responses. Yeah. I mean, apparently, well, some of the people who are bigger YouTubers said in no small way that they are entertainers and they, they're they there to sort of entertain people. And so that is, that does make it a little more difficult to sort of parse, well, when are you doing the entertaining part and when is the points, you mm -hmm. know? <laughs> so, what well, a sign. Do, they, you know, it's a sort of Schrodinger's douchebag situation where yeah. they'll push it as far as they can, and then when they get called, it's oh, it's a joke, it's satire, I'm an entertainer. That was the problem I had with uh, Kraut and T, like his parts in The Amazing Atheist response, and also his live stream response to it with a bunch of other people was that um, when he got around specifically to like H bombs, uh, questions which you know a lot of them were just kind of jokes to keep the video entertaining but like at one point uh kraut was just like why should i take this guy seriously i mean just look at his channel look at these video titles and it's like well he's an entertainer why are you like like why are you in, in the same video tj's like oh we're entertainers you know like we and then kraut later is just like oh look at this guy trying to be entertaining krauts i thought were among the worst oh uh, you know, absolutely I've been no. very i've been very nice no question. <laughs> Everyone could see that I've been nice and charitable, but 
his were ter they were just terrible. Most of them had nothing to do with the question. He just babbled about how horrible Islam is. Mm -hmm. um, none of us understand um, what it's like living in Germany right now because of Islam. And when when I we mentioned Christian. well, when we mentioned you know, like I said, well, Christy, he said he didn't really believe she lived in Germany. Like this is a very strange <laughs> thing. No, he, you know, it's like. Like, yeah, I doubt that. Like, why would she lie about that? Like, of all the strange things, you know, you can, well, randomly. you can just, you can look up, <laughs> you can look up the fact that she works at the place she claims to work at. Yeah, yeah I mean, in I'm, in I'm Germany. You know, my pub, my papers are out there. My, my my stuff is out there. It's pretty. pretty yeah, but you but you don't you don't do videos dressed in lederhosen, so it can't be real. Yeah, so the yeah. series about the Christmas markings in Cologne, that's just, you know, I was just a tourist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, it's sort of, if you're going to bother to answer the questions, then just answer the questions, man. Why are you having this freak mm. out about how we don't understand yeah. and I've just, what it's like in Cologne? You know, like, well, I don't just, live in Cologne. <laughs> something, just, something just struck me. There's far more evidence that Christy lives in Germany than Kraut lives in Germany. Yeah. Yeah, but he could be from fucking anywhere. He could be an Englishman putting that accent on. I don't know where he's from. Yeah, I actually thought the first time I heard his voice, I thought that he was English, but then I was like, oh wait, he is. Isn't I'm he? just saying, if we're gonna if we're gonna doubt, I've not seen any credentials that he's from Germany. That's, that's... Yeah, I, I I actually linked to his hangout on my Twitter as it was going on, and it was just like I linked it, and then I was just like, why won't you guys shut up about Islam? Why do you keep talking about this? It's like shut up. <laughs> Like yeah. that was my only. That was, that was my With gut one response. Question about Islam. One, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, so that, and if you're saying, like I said, if you're saying I don't really care about this because Islam is a much bigger problem. Fine, then what the fuck are you asking? <laughs> you know, why yeah. would you even bother to load this up? What mm -hmm. are you doing just so that you can yell about Islam when nobody is talking yeah. about that? I just. Like, I need to. I need to make a video about like the whole Islam thing at some point, because I think, I mean, there's, there's like, they, they, they might be right about like some of the, their points about the discourse on Islam, like, oh, people are always making apologies for Islam. And then the, and then, you know, and then the other people who, I mean, Majid Nawaz was right to a point when he actually defined the term regressive left as like people who make apologies for illiberal things. Cause there are definitely people who are like, no, Islam is a religion, but as a, as somebody who's like you know, I'm not sure that there really is a religion of peace a, out there at all. So like, why are you so set on like, you know, Islam being the one religion that's like the worst? I mean, yeah, they're probably the most vocal about like, they probably have the most profiled terror acts out of any religious group since modern media became a thing, but. What what makes you think that other religions don't have the same things written into their doctrines? Are you just willing to go over that because they're not? I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> this is just kind of like my whole two cents on the issue as somebody who isn't really 100% informed. And also, can I just say, as someone who lives in Cologne, and also some, you know, and being in Germany, you know, I've done a video. On Prove it. Cologne. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 <laughs> and you know there's there are laws against hate speech in germany and inciting people to or you know de saying things that are very abusive and violent and de dehumanizing i think is the term to people based on their religious beliefs for instance um but i show my face um and so i think you can critique islam without having any concerns about hate speech if you do it based on reason and evidence and appealing to, you know, humanism and other humanist principles. So I don't understand why he feels the need to hide if he's not saying anything that could be deemed hate speech. Because he doesn't think hate speech exists. Like, that's the, he, I, I'm sure he would employ the Steven Crowder defensive. Like, oh, if somebody says something and you don't like it, you don't get to call it hate speech. I think that's a direct Steven Crowder quote from the triggering at UMass. Right, but you can do a decent critique without having to say anything even close to hate speech. Yeah, definitely. That's my point. And people have. Be able to make his arguments and put his face mm -hmm. to it and say, 
you know, these are my objections, these are my concerns, and present it in a way that wouldn't cross any lines. Well, clearly he is, um, if he believes the things that he's saying, he's kind of crazy. He's a, you know, I mean. Yeah, he does seem very Alex Jonesy about the whole Islam he thing. He is acting like they're at his door. Like, they're hiding under his bushes. They're right there. Like, we're all going to be attacked. Western culture is going down mm. in smoke, yeah. even. Like, so, I don't know. So, his was uh, another thing that I saw a lot that was terrible. There was a lot of that to coke fa fallacy, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong. To coke, right? To coke, yeah. But, you know, all it's just, I know you what, I know what, yeah. Now I can't speak. Now because now I can't speak Latin, and I can't speak. Um, but it's all that. <laughs> nah, you. It's you. Yeah. SJWs do that, not us. That's, we don't do that. That's TJ. That mind. was. That was TJ's favorite. It, it just over and over again, and it's like, look, that's a fallacy. Cut it up. Just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> just you know why it's a fallacy? Because, you know, the pot that called the kettle black was right. That's why it's a fallacy. So shut the fuck up about it, all right? So let's but go. Logic on his t-shirt. <laughs> Five things for your puppy. Barkbox.com. Uh, so ju that's just me because I had to sit through. Well, I didn't have to. I chose to sit through <laughs> many videos and read through many of these things. Yeah. And if I saw one more, I was going to beat somebody over the head with it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think then we've probably come to the end. It's been a long, strange journey, but we got there in the end. Um, yeah, any last final comments or thoughts from any of the participants? Uh, just make sure to join Against the Odds, the Facebook group. Yeah, and I'm perfect. very happy to see you there. Yeah. Well, thanks, uh, Kevin, for joining us. Sorry again for the background noise. And also, Tom, it was worth the wait. It was great to hear your thoughts and your reading, your close reading of the Army <laughs> Skeptic video. We haven't had sort of that depth of a focus on Windy Video. So I'm good. I know that people in the comments will be happy because that's one of the things they complained about in the last one. So thank you guys for joining me. And for those of you watching, um, I've been Christy, and it's been CC and Kevin and Tom. We've all been really happy to have you. You guys have been awesome. And uh, we'll see we'll be finishing this up in part three and that will come out on a very um, spontaneous nature sometime next week so um see you guys later bye